Now that we've got SimSaw installed, let's go ahead and get started with creating our first claim. But before we do so, let's take a look at the user interface to kind of get familiar with the different sections of the software. Now starting at the top, this is where you'll find all of your main menu items. Starting with Home, Claim, View, Tools, Maintain, Manage, and Help. Now at this point you'll notice that many of these items are grayed out because we haven't really gotten started yet. But you'll see as we start creating some files, these menus will become enabled, and I'll explain what many of them do during that process. Now moving over to the left side of the screen, you'll see a section here called User Drawers. As we create claim drawers for categorization and organization of our claim files, they'll be listed here. You'll see how those work in just a minute. And then this main area over here to the right, this is where our claim list will be compiled once we start creating claim files. As you can see, we haven't started yet, but as soon as we start creating claims, you'll see them populate this list here. And then finally down here at the bottom left, you'll see a section called System Drawers. These drawers will always be displayed here and provide different administrative views of all your claim files. And we'll talk about those in just a minute as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started by creating a claim drawer. This is the first thing that needs to happen before we can create any actual claim files within SimSol. So to do so, I'll simply come up to the top here in the drawer section of this home menu and you'll see that the new drawer option is enabled. I'll go ahead and click on that. And that will display the drawer properties screen. So this screen gives us a chance to enter some details about the claim drawer that we'd like to create to store some of our claim files. So think of these claim files as no different than filing cabinet drawers in your office. Basically how you want to categorize your claims. So I'm going to give this particular drawer a name that reflects the type of claims I'm going to keep stored in this drawer. So for now, I'll call it my homeowner's claims drawer. Once I've got the drawer name set, the next thing I can do that's going to save me a bunch of time in the long run is I can set the default repair price database for this drawer. So every time I create a claim in this drawer, it will automatically use the pricing database that I've selected for that drawer. This may come in very handy in a CAD situation where maybe I'll be working in an area for a while and I know that the prices are going to remain pretty constant for my duration in this area. Instead of having to enter this information on any new claim, I can go ahead and set it here. So I'll start by clicking on the Building Database button at the top left. That'll bring up the Database Selection window. I'll go ahead and select the SimSol Commercial Residential Database and I'll pick the global pricing table for October 2013, which would be the most current one at the time of this video. Once I'm satisfied with my choices, I'll go ahead and hit Done. The next screen that pops up is the Location and Markup Factor Entry screen. This option lets me set the default location of this drawer as well, so every claim that gets created in this drawer will automatically use the location I provide also something very handy in a CAT situation. So I'll first select the state. In this case I'm going to select Florida. I'll then pick a zip code that I want to be working in. And SimSol only requires that I enter the first three digits of the zip code to pick the city that I'm working in. Here I see Orlando. I'll select it to double click. And that brings over my material, labor, and equipment location factors for the Orlando area. Once I'm happy with those numbers I'll go ahead and hit done hit yes to confirm and I've now set the building database options for this particular drawer my homeowners claims drawer. Now not only can I set the default building database I can now move on and set the default contents database as well so my contents estimates will use whatever database I specify for this drawer. I'll do so by hitting this contents database button. The database name will be the SimSol personal property the global pricing table will be 2013 January. I'll go ahead and hit done. And once again, I can select the state and zip code of the area I'll be working. Accept those factors and hit done. Confirmation once again. And now at the bottom of the drawer property screen, I can see that I now have my contents options set as well. So once again, this is a great time saver and a feature you'll want to take advantage of when creating new claims drawers within SimSol. So I'm happy with my drawer properties. I'm going to go ahead and hit Done. And now my drawer has been created. 
you'll see it listed over here in the left side under user drawers. As I start to create more drawers, they'll compile in a list on this side of the screen. When I highlight a drawer, it'll show me all the claims inside that drawer over here in the right in the section called the Claims Grid. Now at this point I don't have a claim created, so that's what we'll go ahead and do next. So to create a new claim, I just need to go up to the top left of the screen, and in the Home menu, the very first option is New Claim. I'll click that. That will bring up the Claim Setup Wizard screen. This Claim Setup Wizard lets me select the type of claim I'll be working on, and then will present me with a series of screens that lets me fill out some of the basic information of the claim. So for this example, I'm going to go ahead and select Homeowner's Claim. Upon clicking Homeowner's Claim, I'm presented with a screen to enter the file number. So let me go ahead and make up a file number here for this file and click OK. My claim is now being created, and up comes the first screen of the Claim Setup Wizard. All the fields indicated here with red text are fields that we'll want to fill out to make sure that our file information is complete. They aren't necessary to continue, which means I can always come back and fill the information out once I've created the file, but it's always best to get it done now. Okay, now that I've got the loss information filled out, I'll go ahead and continue with the Claim Setup Wizard by clicking Next. The next screen that comes up is the Policy and Coverage Information screen. This lets me fill out the coverage information for this particular file and move on once I'm done. Okay, and I've got the policy information filled out. The most important portion of this policy information screen would be the coverages down here at the bottom left. I want to make sure my building, APS, and personal property coverages are filled out with the correct amounts, and I also want to make sure I have these checkboxes selected if there is a coverage so I can make sure that the estimate gets created when I'm done. Once I'm happy with the policy information, I'll go ahead and click Next. The third screen of the wizard lets me select the building, APS, and contents databases that I want to use to write my estimates. Now, as you remember, when we were in the Drawer Properties screen, we set the default database for this drawer. That's why these fields are already filled out for us. Like I said, that was a great time saver because now we can skip this step by simply clicking Next. I'm now at the final screen of the Claim Setup Wizard, and I have some different options as to where I can navigate from here. The options are Return to the Claim Grid, Go Directly into the Claim, or Go Directly to one of the estimates within the claim. And I've got Building, APS, or Pertinent Private Structure, and Contents. While I would typically use this option here, Go to Claim, I'm going to select this option at the top, Return to Claim Grid. That way I can show you how to manually access your claim once it's been created. So with that option selected, I'll come down here and click Finish. Okay, and just like that, you've created your first claim. You'll see it listed in the Claim Grid in the Homeowner's Claims drawer that we created on the left side. So now to access that claim, I can simply double-click on it, or because it's highlighted, since it's the only claim I have thus far, I can simply hit this button on the left, Show Highlighted Claim File. I'm now in the actual claim file, and you'll notice that many of those menu items that we discussed before are now enabled, because I'm in the claim. Now, as I'm in the claim, you'll notice on the left side that that menu has changed. What used to show our drawers before is now showing what's called the Claim Enclosure Tree. These are all the different portions or sections of the actual claim file. It contains our estimates, a place to do valuations, reports, forms, sketches, import our digital photos, do scan documents, attach documents, and add notes to our claim file as well. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and get out of this claim and return to the Claim Grid. I'll go to the top, click Show Claims Grid, and that returns me back to the drawer view. You'll see my homeowner's claims drawer on the left, and that claim that I was just in is highlighted in blue in the Claims Grid. So those are the basics of getting started with your first claim file. Now in the next video, we'll get to know the Claim Enclosure Tree and how to navigate and work on different sections of your claim file.